Hello and welcome back to ICS 100. So we're going to be moving forward today and we're going to be looking at, you know, disasters and what we can do to help, you know, protect our data and, you know, like making sure we don't have any data loss or, you know, anything bad happen because disasters, you know, they do happen. So let's jump into the slides and start looking at, you know, disasters. So to start with, uh, you know, you always want to make sure that you're two steps ahead. Uh, you know, you don't want to wait until the disaster happens for, you know, you to start figuring out what is my disaster recovery plan or what do I do, um, right? So our data is important for us. You know, we wish to protect it. We don't want to lose any data as well. So we want to make sure that, you know, we have this disaster, you know, recovery plan in place in case it does happen for us. So there's different things that we can actually use, um, you know, as well when we're doing this. So we got to you know, set up a plan of an action of attack for us to do. So, you know, when the disaster happens and, you know, when you're thinking of a disaster, it could be, you know, something like, you know, tsunami, earthquake, hurricane, or even, you know, someone breaking into the office and stealing a system. So you want to make sure, you know, that you have something set in place so that you can avoid this these disasters. Because, you know, our data is important, so we want to protect it. So, what can we do to help protect our data? Um, so let's jump back into the slides and look at some of these options that we have. So one of the things that we can do is we can implement, you know, something involving physical security. And so what this is going to do is, right, I mean, it's going to involve protecting our hardware. So we don't want someone to be able to just walk in and walk off with, you know, our uh, laptop or the desktop. You know, we want to make sure that we have some type of physical security that helps protect this. And this can, you know, involve a lot of different aspects. And the main purpose is, right, we're designing it that we don't want to um, allow any authorized access. And we can do this in different ways. And a lot of ways companies do this um, are, you know, CCTV, um, you know, security guards as well, uh, barriers, locks. And, you know, they have different ways of controlling access. So, you know, if you spend time walking around uh, Leeward, you'll notice that, you know, we have security guards. Um, you know, we have um, locks on our offices and classrooms. And, you know, we have ways of controlling access. Uh, you know, we even have, like, key cards. So you can see that, you know, even here at Leeward, we do have ways of controlling physical um, access to devices. We have this physical security implemented. So a lot of companies do this as well. So do keep that in mind that we have this physical security um, available to us. And this should be like one of your first lines of defense is like, you know, setting this up as well. So let's jump and look at physical security for the home because this is more for companies. So physical security for the home, um, you know, when you, we leave, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you lock all your doors and windows. You know, this is a very easy way of gaining entry into the house. So you want to make sure you lock all your doors and windows. And with windows, you could even put in, um, you know, like a security bar. So you'd put it behind the window so it doesn't slide open easily. You know, that's one way we can do this. You can even go and um, purchase an alarm system, you know, and this will help protect your home as well. And then another thing you can do is any type of computer components or anything that's, you know, has a value, you can lock it to a desk or, you know, put it in a safe at home. So, you know, there is things we could do for physical security at home where, you know, you don't want to just leave it, uh, you know, your windows and doors open. You know, an alarm system will be a very good deterrent. A lot of times when you get an alarm system, they give you decals that you can put, you know, on your windows and doors and, you know, if someone's trying to break into your house, they're going to see this and be like, well, you know, I'm probably going to go next, you know, to another place because of, you know, this is an alarm system and, you know, I'm, I don't want to be caught. So, you know, you got these um, that we can use for home security as well. So let's jump back in and look at how we can protect, you know, um, our data security as well. So let's go and move from physical to our data security. So data security, we can, um, you know, protect this as well. You know, this is like uh, we have protection software and we want our data from being damaged. We don't want you know, our data would be compromised, and we can do this using some protection um, software. And as well, what we can do is we can also use a strong password. We want to make sure that, you know, our password is um, very secure so that people can't go and, you know, go and figure out what our password is and then gain access to our devices. 
Um, we can also do this two-factor authentication. And two-factor authentication is something that you have and something that you know. And as well, another element that we can implement is you know, disk encryption. So we can actually go and implement disk encryption so that if the device, let's say, does get stolen, you know, our hard drive would be encrypted. So they wouldn't be able to go and view our data. It's encrypted, which is great. So you know, there's that security um, there as well. And our two-factor authentication, we actually use this um, very regularly in our personal lives um, already. Think about your debit card. It's something you have, your debit card. It's something you know is your PIN number. So you know, if you lose your debit card, it's not really useful unless they have that PIN number. So you know, that's what's nice um, as well. Or if someone figures out your PIN number, you know, it's not useful if they don't have the card. So um, you know, we have this two-factor authentication that we use already with our debit cards and our ATMs um, as well. So let's jump back into the slides and look at, you know, what happens if a disaster does hit? What can we do? So one of the first things that we're going to want to make sure that we have um, is our disaster recovery plan. You know, this is basically saying, you know, a plan of action in case a disaster does happen, right? We don't want to be waiting until the last minute to kind of like figure out what we're going to do. So we're going to have this plan that's already in place so that if a disaster does happen, we just basically, you know, run with it. We already, in, we just invoke the plan and we go with it and we implement it. Um, and what the plan should include is basically how to keep, you know, everything operational until we could get our regular computer, um, you know, restored and everything. So our normal operations back up and running. So you want to set up this disaster recovery plan. And, you know, we can do this by, you know, actually going and creating something called a hot site. And a hot site is basically contains all the needed equipment that we need to get up and running. So we basically, you know, if something happens to our primary location, we could go to this hot site and basically we could get there and everything's up and running already for us. There, it's a lot less um, work involved for this. Though, keep in mind a hot site is more expensive as well to maintain. Um, or we could go and create this special cold site and basically, you know, this the equipment isn't there, we actually have to bring the equipment in. So, you know, you have these different options. You have your hot site, you have a cold site, and you got to think about cost that's involved as well. Um, you know, a hot site is going to cost more because you have all your equipment there. It's pretty much, you could just go sit down and you'll be up and operational, you know, with the flip of a switch pretty much. Where a cold site, you have to go and bring everything in, set it up, um, you know, but it is less expensive. So, you know, keep in mind with, when you're creating this disaster recovery plan about, you know, like what um, is going to be more cost effective and what is the need of a company. You know, so keep that in mind as well. So, um, you know, when we do have this, these disasters do strike, what can we do to help make sure that, you know, we don't lose important data? So let's go and look at, you know, ways and things we can do to help make sure that we don't lose any um, important data as well. So let's jump back into the slides. So we want to make sure we stop data loss. If a disaster does happen, we don't want to lose any data. And one of the ways we can do this is actually by, you know, performing frequent backups. So you want to make sure that you're backing up your data very regularly. You know, set it up so it does it on a schedule. Uh, you know, this will make sure that, you know, you're not going to lose a lot of data. It might only be a couple of days or so that you lose, but you're not going to lose everything. And as well, you're going to want to back up to different types of media. Uh, you know, this is recommended as, you know, you can't always predict when something's going to fail. So, you know, you want to make sure you back up to different types of media. And something that I recommend is, um, you know, I recommend backing up to three different types of media. So I actually say, um, you know, back up to an external hard drive. So, you know, get like a USB hard drive and plug it into your um, system and back up all your data on that. And as well, back up to a cloud storage location. And, you know, this is nice because you can access it anywhere. It's in the cloud. It's available for use anywhere that you are. And then um, finally, as well, back up to something um, optical media. So like DVDs or things like that. So you know, you have these different options to use so that, you know, your external hard drive, you know, it might crash. You might drop it. If that happens, you know, you have your cloud storage or you have the CDs. So keep in mind, you know, that we have these different um, 
options that we can back up to, and you should be backing up to them regularly on a regular basis as well. So let's jump and look at um, you know, a little more in depth about cloud backup. So we can do some cloud-based backups. And you know, a lot of these services you can subscribe to, and you know, for a little fee, you could get this storage that you need as well. And a lot of times, these will automatically back up your data for you. So that's really nice. Um, and if you're looking for you know, cloud technologies, you know, look at that session that we spent time looking at it. So you know, hopefully this is uh, informative and hopefully you, know, you gained a little bit about disasters and how you can protect your data. So thanks and you know, we'll see you next time.